Hello everyone, I'm going to show you one of my new products. It's a stereo and dual mono power amp. It's called the A212. And this is it. And it's 135 watt into 8 ohms and 270 watt into 4 ohms, 500 watts into 2 ohms. Switchable between dual mono and stereo internal switches. And this is one of those amps that after I built the first one, I really don't want to build another one. And I, t I will tell you why. It's nothing to do with performance. I have nothing to complain about the performance. But you know what? I designed them. I built them. So if I can, if I tell you how it's, how good it sounds, you should take a pound of salt anyway. So don't don't take it from me. I'll take it for somebody that actually heard it. But anyway, it's nothing to do with the performance. But I'm going to take the camera off from the tripod and show you closer of what the amps looks like. The amp is about 17 inches wide, 8 inches tall, and 21 inches deep. Uh, somebody take the microphone off. 21 inches deep. If I can get close enough, see I can close up. Oh yeah, yeah, I can focus on the A212. Little symbol here, the mirror image, and that's my name. And the power switch there, right there. Go into the back. Go into the back of two pairs of binding pole per channel. They are identical to upper and bottom, so you can use it for by wire. Each channel has a RC and XL out inputs. This is the ground post. Ground post. The blue jack is FCF jacks. It connects the external power supply external capacitor pack to the output stage and the SP capacitor jack is for connecting external capacitor pack to the input stage and that's a ground lift switch is very handy if you actually have a system ground loops uh, issues just flip it up and lift the ground you disconnect one of the signal one of the signal ground to earth ground in the, in the amp the chassis is always grounded so there is no problem of uh, any kind of uh, safety issues that's the AC power inlet standard IEC. That's the whole back of the uh, panel for this amp. I'm going to put the camera back to the tripod. Then I will explain to you why I don't want to build another one of these. Now again, I have nothing to complain about the performance. The performance is actually really good. Uh, even though that you shouldn't really take take my advice on sound, sound advice on my own equipment and you shouldn't take advice from most of uh, people who sell you the stuff you, you really have to listen and listen and judge it yourself now the reason I don't want to build another one is this thing is like almost 80 pounds and I'm a one person company I don't have anybody to help me and I don't want anybody don't want to hire anybody to help me because after all, more than 30 years of building audio equipment I am in the period of the most enjoyable time of my life all by myself every day every single day six and a half days to seven days a week 360 days or more a year so i really don't want to build anything that too big so i cannot handle myself this one pushing my limits um i don't want to hurt myself as soon as i do that well you know guess what is i can't enjoy myself building any more audio audio toys I call it audio toys. It is a toys. So, I did this for a special customer that he really wanted a, stereo, a dual mono amp, and I put a switch in there so I can uh, switch to uh, the stereo because I kind of see stereo is a better solution than a dual mono if it's in, is it within one chassis because you're sharing power sharing the, uh, between left and right channel. So that's uh, more benefit, but he really want to do a mono so i said okay i'm going to put a switch on it so you can switch between switch between them and see what happened but as soon as, as long as the power supply is big enough it's like a like a big it's like a big bucket of water you put some white ink to it you put some red ink to it left and right channel if you have a big enough bucket of water you don't see that paint coming on you just kind of see kind of milky white and the bucket water is big enough like a big reservoir you when you see the ink you would not see the ink so just like that in the ca in the capacitor bank if it's big enough you will not have any contamination between the left and right channel so that's why 
I said stereo is just as good or better than the than the dual mono because you have and when you have dual mono you have two AC supply separate AC supply so when they fluctuate they don't sync together so one can go up a little bit one the other one don't, don't go as high and they're always slightly different in a dual mono but since I don't want to build these big things and there are more customer out there that wants this kind of power this kind of drive especially driving two ohms lows and possibly down to one ohm occasionally down to one ohms so what I'm gonna do I have to find something that I can hold and carry around easy enough myself and you know I still thinking about how to pack these things in the box so that would be a Saturday job put the microphone on top so here's my solution that's one That is two. My solution is monobrock. Same chassis as the A210, which is 17, and 17 inches wide, four and a half inches high, 14 and a half inches deep, a lot lighter. I mean, it's not half as light because it's, you still have to say, you have to redundant some of them inside. So this is about 80 pounds, 85 pounds. This will be about 45 pounds, but 45 pounds is a lot, a lot easier to handle. Um, a lot lighter, smaller, and it, the center of gravity for me to carry is much better. And it, this is deep, it's 8 inches deep compared to 4.5, go and put my hand down there, it's much easier to build compared to that one. So that's, the, the reason I don't want to build this big M is all because of how it built. And there are some people might always say that find a better way to do it. Um, no, I don't want to find a better way to do it because all of the better way to do it, all the easier way to do it is involve quick disconnect because you can pre-wire the modules, have quick disconnect when you install it, just click, 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 and then you can, do, you can get it done. Yeah, you connect it, but it's not as good as solder joints. In order to get the highest performance, you got to solder everything. So modules here modules here and then in the middle you gotta stick your hand inside and solder it one by one all those connections that is an absolute pain and it's not easy to do but in a lower chassis like this much easier to do i have done many many of this before actually more than 50 in this in similar case no problem never have a complaint this one i complain a lot to myself so that's that's the only reason I have nothing to complain about the performance because the performance will be at least identical between the two, maybe slightly different if we, if you actually do it as a monobrock configuration, but this monobrock can be go to into stereo mode by two two connecting cable between them, and this monobrock is going to call the A211. I just kind of like the A211 model number over the A212. It's just my, my personal preference. Bias. Yeah, bias. So that's the reason I am showing you the A212. If you really, really, really insist on doing this, I may do one, but really, I don't really want to do it because it physically hurt me. Mentally, not so much, but physically. So I would, I, this is the only one I did for a special customer. We don't want to do another one. Monoblock, no problem. I do anytime. And that's the end of the video. And that's all I want to tell you. So until next time, stay safe. See you later. Bye.